parental advisory. Yes, indeed. And welcome to the Pan Nerdia podcast. <clears throat> doing, doing, doing. <laughs> I was waiting for you to get that last doing, the real bass one. Uh, this is actually episode four. You guys didn't know there's actually been three other episodes. Jeez, get in your fucking game. Shit, man. Mm. Yeah, I don't even know about the fucking other three episodes, you man. You didn't see us. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Hmm. I think actually the first three were just me. No, the first one was me and you, right? Mm-hmm. Then the second two were just me. And then this is the fourth one, so. We had talked about on that first one about the, well, basically the end of Dragon Ball Super. Right, with 131, yeah. Right. Yeah, well, we kind of thought about, like, the future of the series past that point. I do not remember if we uh, found out anything about the movie or we knew about the movie at that time. Uh, uh, no, we didn't. I don't think we did uh, We yet. didn't at all. Yeah. I think there was sort of a speculation, though. Right. I think we knew that the series was ending for a little bit there. Mm-hmm. I think maybe we did <clears> know about the movie, but we had no idea what the movie was going to be. I think that's well, the Well, basically, we what, I remember what, would ha- what had happened was... It was the end of Super, and then they immediately told us that they were going to have a break. Right. They're going to take a break. Right. And everybody looked at it like an extended the end break. of Super. Like every, there's more people watching Super than your know, Dragon Ball in general than ever. Right. And there's no way they're ending Super. You know, like, and as soon as kind of everybody put two and two together, they're like, wait a second, they're grossing all these, you know, the the money. Right. So. Right. So, it's a cash grab, man. Yeah, it's yeah. a cash grab. It's like, let's make a movie now. And they competed with every other movie that was out. Yeah, they really did, man. I mean, when it came down to it, uh, it was just... It was something they needed to do um, to really get another spark. I mean, the spark was the series Rebirth anyway. They, they call it the Dragon Ball Renaissance, right? Where with Dragon Ball Super coming back and those two movies, Resurrection F and Battle Gods, that it was kind of like the rebirth. Mm-hmm. But the only real exciting thing, really, past the Goku Black stuff, was the Tournament of Power, and then they're like, it's ending, and they're like, okay, what? it's like, why? Because we're gonna make it up to you pretty much by an awesome freaking movie that we're gonna literally have to stop a series to do, but we're gonna make it so badass and work so damn hard on it that it's going to draw you back in like never before and get you ready for, for more. And that's right. what we're talking about tonight on Pain Nerdy Podcast. <clears throat> we're talking about essentially, well, the impact that the Dragon Ball Super Brawly movie left on not only the series as a whole, but the world. Because this shit's global now. Not right. only from the theatrical standpoint, but from video games, merchandise, the series as a whole, from... The Japanese original OG Japanese to all the dubs that happen around the world, man, it's 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 blowing up, and that's what we want to discuss tonight. And yeah, a lot of Dragon Ball on this channel, but you know, and we're, this is not gonna be a review of of the sh- of the movie by any means, at least not quite yet. We're not gonna do it with this podcast, but we are just gonna discuss its impact and the future of really now what the future holds for for this show. So right, yeah, man. <clears throat> so what did you really? What did you think? Now, without just giving a review, what was like? What impact did it have on you? I should I should ask. Just just being at the movie, the experience of the movie, or yeah, sure, <coughs> the experience of the movie. As a as how a it's sitting with you now after you've seen it. Okay. What's up, Domino? Well, um, as a fan, like there's two different kind of the ways I look at it. Is like as a fan. Like, to where I enjoy the series in itself, mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm excited. Right. Right? As, like, if I was just go watch a movie, I would honestly, like, the movie that I saw was a nine and a half out of ten. Right. You know? Yeah. I feel you, man. There was just a couple things I didn't like about it. And it wasn't anything about the storytelling or the animation. <clears throat> and it was just... The only things I didn't like was, I think, the frame rate. Mm-hmm. I, the frame. I know that they, they did a lot of work on this movie. There's a lot of different, you know, characters and everything that they have to put together. Um, but just it's just that frame rate. I know they worked so hard to get it done so so quickly. That frame rate just lacked so hard. Sometimes. You think so? Yeah. Because, I think for the 3D models, it did. Well, 
Yeah, but the other, the I think it models, worked really well for the animation style. Some it's of so the, fluid, you know. Right, it it, it was fluid, <coughs> but I wish it had just been, uh, just you know, <clears throat> a little bit faster. The frame rate that is. Yeah, I feel you. Just because in those in between moments of slow moving and fast moving, it was like this kind of a stutter that I would see, you know, like, mm-hmm. and I'm not knocking it at all, but I it's just it, yeah. a little bit of they could have done a little more high quality, but. They were on a time crunch. They were to a degree. I mean, they did stop a series of work on it, but they had their best staff. But I feel you on that to a degree. I, I'm always indifferent of the 3D models when it comes mm-hmm. to that because I know they will do that. These were the best 3D models out of Resurrection F and Battle Gods. Like out of the, those three movies with this one added, this CGI was, you know, leagues better for sure. Mm-hmm. But I do, I did get a sense of that at least in that part. The other part, I loved the animation. I, a lot of people were, were hating on it in terms of some of its, they call them Blobku, when Blob, Goku's real blobby in some ways. Oh, yeah. But I liked it because it's more loose and felt more... Right. It's, it's more, more playful, right? Yeah, to a degree, but it's more like, it's it's meant to be suited more for, for animation to make it more fluid. Mm-hmm. Um, but also it's just, it, it looks more natural. It's just the way certain body weight hangs is more natural. It's not so blocky, you know, like the series uh, Dragon Ball Super in particular was kind of designed after. But... As far as uh, kind of the impact it had for me, man, I mean, shit, I saw it a second time. I mean, I know I gave you guys uh, here on the channel the, my first reactions, but I saw it a second time in theaters. Second time, the sound was better um, in that particular theater, which was nice, because I didn't notice the first time we saw it. Um, something with that theater's sound wasn't real loud. Like, the balancing wasn't good. Mm. I felt like it was loud at first, but when we got to the big fights, you know, right. um, <clears throat> towards the end, I was expecting it to be way louder than it, than it was. Uh, so when I saw it the second time, that theater was great. It, the, and it was actually a bigger screen I saw it on. It wasn't IMAX, but it was a bigger screen, mm-hmm. and it sounded better. So that was good. I had a great experience uh-huh. seeing it again. Caught a lot of stuff I missed. Um, there are definitely things I, you know, I hope there's some kind of extended version of it with the Blu-ray coming out because I felt like the Bardock uh, stuff was uh, too short. Um, I feel like they needed to give stuff to Paragus and stuff because it was really a story about Brawly, but the... The Bardock stuff was too little because at the end they show him, or at the end of the Bardock <clears throat> stuff, they show him we're actually rebelling against Frieza, but it's only for like five seconds and you see him all battle damaged, but it mm-hmm. never showed him doing all his battle. Now, I know that's supposed to be like, oh, you saw the Bardock special, but it's like, yeah, I did, but you guys changed it completely, so I almost didn't expect you to do the rebel Bardock rebellion scene, but you no. show an a, a instance of it at, the, in, at that part when Frieza's blowing up Vegeta. All right, now. Try, try to remind me of this. Um, <clears throat> when him and when Broly and Frieza were fighting, right? Did um, at the end of that, did Frieza hold his own? Was I mean, still, you can technically he... say Frieza hold his own because he fought him for over an hour while uh, Gogeta was trying to fuse her, right. Mm-hmm. Um, so he definitely had stamina to hold out, but in terms of fighting, he was getting his ass whooped. But he definitely was holding his own in terms of, I mean, he was fighting for over an hour and managed to fucking stay in his golden form the whole time. Right. So, and I would say, yeah, I mean, he could take a beating. <laughs> right. I mean, and, and I think that, well, the way Broly fights was not a good, like, technical matchup with Frieza. Oh, or definitely yeah, not Frieza, but in definitely not Goku and Vegeta. Because Goku and Vegeta are martial artists and right. warriors. Frieza learned from them pretty much in terms of fighting. So Frieza was like a brawly to a degree mm-hmm. before. He probably had some fighting knowledge, but barely any. So we have to compare to like Brawly the Frieza. Yeah, Frieza is way better of a martial artist if you even want to call him that. Brawly is just straight, straight up brute battle, and he's like barbarian, fucking slamming. Like he's like the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, for sure. You know. Hmm. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? I mean, Bro- hey, Broly is... we Because we still haven't seen any sort of <clears throat> max to his power yet. By the way, this is going to have some spoilers in here about the movie. So just letting you guys know. Because I was about to say some shit to, in here in a second. So Okay. But yeah. Well, yeah. If you don't want to get spoiled, just... It's like you I know right now. Because we're kind of, we're, you know, what? 15 minutes deep now. We've been kind of skimming the surface. Mm-hmm. But if we're going to start talking about this and as we move on there's gonna be shit to talk about um i mean you already heard about the gogeta thing so uh what gogeta thing 
we mentioned Gogeta already. Oh, did we? Yeah, a few times. I was talking about how like it took freeze uh, over an hour, blah blah blah. So what about well, look, Goku even said at the end of the movie that he's he's like, I want to teach Brawly some stuff. I want to fight, come in and fight Brawly, and I can teach him some things. Okay. So there you go, right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. The control is key. Maybe now, can control his berserk form. You know. Okay, so when you saw Gogeta beating the brakes off of Broly. Yeah. And, and not really like knock. He, they weren't knocking him. He was still coming. He was still coming, but, but he, he was he getting hit hard. It wasn't a fight at that point, really. It, it was yeah, a beating at that he point. He couldn't touch Gogeta, and Gogeta was just countered and just hit him so hard every single time. Right. And when we saw that, right, he goes, hmm. Oh hmm. yeah. Yeah. Whis was very curious about Gogeta in general. I think he really was. Is like, that the that's the first Whis has seen that technique, right? Yeah, he's the first time he's ever seen him fused because he didn't even see Vegito Blue. Um, Supreme Kai did, and so did uh, well, Whis probably. Was, yeah, Whis knows about. Whis fusion. knows about fusion. Yeah, he probably heard that they fused to Vegito, but he didn't see it himself. This is the first time he saw the fusion. Um, but yeah, dude. I mean, um, Gogeta just wrecked Broly. Uh, even when Broly, okay, this is a, another thing in terms of like the impact of the fight and the animation, and everything. It was just amazing. And it left me wanting some more action like that. But in terms of the transformations, their Super Saiyan form transformations were both dope. Mm -hmm. Broly's was great, just as regular Super Saiyan, where he came out of the ground with the red eyes and everything. And Gogeta, when he turned Super Saiyan, just regular Super Saiyan, those were both awesome. But when they both turned. And in their final forms, Blue and Brawly Full Power, they were in that other dimension. And that other right. dimension scene was dope. Granted, they are using CGI, but it was so cool that right. they were fighting so hard and so much energy output that they went to another dimension and didn't even realize it. That's how strong these fuckers are. That's how focused in that fight they were. But they transformed in, in those scenes so fast. Like, Brawly just out of nowhere transforms to his big green-haired Full Power form, and Gogeta snaps into Blue. And if you didn't catch it, which I know mm -hmm. we filed it, but... To somebody who doesn't follow it so oh so much, they wouldn't even notice that until after they get yeah. out of the dimension, and then they're like, "Oh wait, their Brawly's even bigger now with green hair, and right. Gogeta's got blue hair now." Right, exactly. They transformed. They should have been bigger transformations. Right, they should have spent I, a little more. Time. I feel you on that, but I feel like that's mar they're marketing back to our generation that knows the old, you know, and right. they, and we we can spot a transformation when we see one. Because, you know, something changes about that character. We're really observant of that. Like, every transformation in that movie was badass. Right. Even Vegeta's and Goku's earlier. Right. Every transformation was. And so just the snap and those last big transformations that end the, ba end the battle mm -hmm. were just like... Yeah. It was kind of like, oh, well... So on. also, when you see Super Saiyan God transformation with red hair... Yeah. And you see Broly beating the brakes off of that, you know, mm -hmm. um, you're going... And like, at... The average, like, just person coming and going to watch that movie would be like, what the hell is that? Right. You know, like, it, like basically, like, oh, they did this and then just got their ass whooped. They, you don't understand what the hell that is. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's supposed to be this brawly movie mm -hmm. with, like, they're advertising his new big green form. And though they show it and he's, like, going crazy, he does this crazy Godzilla blast out of his right. mouth and all but, this cool shit. But it was so quick and at the end of the movie, it was just like... With his form, it's, it felt like he was just getting defeated in that form. Right. He but, wasn't showing him triumph in that form at all. But all I'm saying is that just v like people like us that mm -hmm. are fans of the whole series, right? We can spot that stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they're so they're they're trying to get our attention, you know, and mm -hmm. keep us interested. They are. Domino agrees with us by saying transformations uh, to the cool forms were way too. Uh, fast in my opinion we agree we think they were too we wish they showed at least for a couple more frames and like kind of like i mean i can see what they're trying to do though they're trying to put you into that fight more to where you don't right it's not a pause transform it's like literally transform on the fly on the fly we, i get it we can understand that because we play the games right we know how we that get works it. at that fast pace i just would have loved to see some really cool shit but anyway right. it was already really cool at that point it just could have been even cooler. But, uh, Kura. Could have been even Kura. Mm -hmm. But, uh, shit, man. All in all, we loved the fucking movie. We really did. Right. Um, I think we can both agree on that. And so did everybody else, apparently, because this movie's making some good money in the box office, man. Yeah. 
it's this has been out smashing. two weeks now. Um, should we what? Should we give them the worldwide number, or should we jump with just what we're um, making in the U.S. right now? Just the U.S. right now. So we're at about twenty-eight. Twenty. I think yeah. I believe it was twenty-eight. This is showing a little bit higher. Yeah, twenty-eight million. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, like, you know, you can pull up like Rotten Tomatoes, for example. What? <laughs> Oh, Domino says, I like the new auras. Like, it wasn't just your general key aura. It was really weird and cool-looking outline-looking right. uh, thing that was nice and refreshing. But yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, I um, mean, every, every, and everyone looked a little different, too, from Super Saiyan to God to Blue. Yeah, all the base form auras were, like, very just, like, kind of like some sort of, like, high-intensity steam coming off of them. You know? Yeah, it was. And it and it was really cool looking because it had the, that little white glow like you were talking about. I mean that I like that. I really did. <clears throat> I like the way they did that. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean like I mean you're seeing Broly like you're seeing new transformations being shown in between they're normal transformations now. Yeah, everybody's freaking out about seeing the green hair in the between. Green hair and you, Ultra Instinct. And you saw. Um, kind of. Yes. Well, I mean, also we know about um, kind of like a Kaioken Super Saiyan in between, like Super Saiyan God and Super Saiyan Blue. Oh yeah, right. Like you saw this dark red hair standing up. Yeah, and then it flashed that little Ultra Instinct glimpse too i mean shit didn't even have brawley's fury form where his black hair is just standing straight up with his yellow eyes man it just it was you know i mean they added form. so much to the transformations oh they did man i think hey. that's maybe that's why they made the choice to jump through the transformation so quick yeah i just wish they would have did it for other forms quicker and then made that last yep. form badass but whatever because you know like vegeta's red god form is awesome but uh yeah yes. 28 mil in in the u.s it's nuts already. Um, I think they're already up at like, I don't even know. Um, okay, let's put it this way. Globally, the movie's already made $98.3 million. What? <laughs> 98 fucking point what? three million dollars. It's crazy. That one says one thing I wanted was a crazy scream from Brawl and Gogeta when they transformed like an animation one thing, but they wanted in the bone chilling rage scream. Oh about yeah, get, it's about to get real. That, that would have yeah. been tight. Yeah, yeah I, I, I like the bone chilling rage scream. That's a good yeah, one. Yeah, I would have added all that ambiance. Yeah, I like that. I like I like the wording of that as well. Yes, bone, bone chilling, chilling rage, rage scream. Boom. <laughs> that would have been real nice on that second viewing. Um, but yeah, man, ninety-eight point three million globally, and I think it only had an eight point five million dollar budget. Uh, the shit's got yeah. a freaking eighty-two percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Ninety-four percent of audience liked it. I mean, dude, I'm seeing if they have anything. Oh man! As far as critic reviews, I'm not. Toy really is like, that. they are all on like yachts right now, just chilling. They're totally chilling, dude. <laughs> like, uh. They're all laughing. They got their arms back behind their heads, and they're sipping on a cocktail. <laughs> Dude, so what does that mean for? What does that mean for the future of Dragon Ball? Making that much money on a on a on a movie? That much? Oh God, I don't know. It could it could, they could honestly be like, we've been doing this for so damn long. It's time to cash in. Time to roll out and leave everybody hanging. Spec. I'm just saying it. It's it's just a what if situation. Well, you know the thing that came out the other day about the uh, rumor that the series is coming back. What's well, right? They're saying it's a rumor now because. But that to me is scary. But you, what the series coming back? No, the the rumors. It's not a. This is not a rumor. This was a true thing. But they're they're pulling it back because they don't want people to know yet. Basically, a reporter from a conference of all like entertainment industries. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like from the world to get together and. At that conference, Toei was there, you know, who does the anime, 
and they were saying that they were in, having Dragon Ball Super new episodes in production, and it's a report reported on it. That wasn't supposed to get out, though, so once it got out or it leaked, Toei's trying to cover it up now. And I'm going to try to pull up something with Geekdom 101. So who has, um, <clears throat> who has like, uh, production rights to Dragon Ball in general? Production rights is Toei, Shueisha, um, yeah, Kira Toriyama. <clears throat> what the fuck? Okay. What about the what about the early movies? They've always put them out, right? What's that now? They've always put them out, right? Like the, even the early movies. Say it one more time. <clears throat> Toei. Toei puts out the movies. Yeah, Toei yeah, did all yeah. the movies. Yeah, Toei was a company and <clears throat> was uh, doing all the movies. For I sure. forget. I I just thought one time before we were talking about. Um, Somebody having production rights to somebody, <clears throat> like Disney or something, to somebody, like, for making a movie or something. Right. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay, I'm trying to pull up this article here. Okay, so basically... Here, I'll pull back up on here. So I'm going to be pulling up. I'm not trying to do this for fucking clout or anything. I'm fucking just pulling up a source that I trust. Geekdom 101. Um, so essentially, uh, Toei was at the NATPE conference. It's like the National Association of something entertainment or entertaining industry or some shit. I forget what it stands for. But uh, basically, <laughs> basically, uh, Toei was there and it was, like I said, it said they're making new things. And not only that, the Italian voice actor for Vegeta mentioned, or pretty much spilled the beans on them making new episodes, but then, like a week later, said, oh, I don't really know what I'm talking about. I was just predicting that they were going to make them. He probably knew, but they was asked to not say anything again. Um, so it comes down to, he, Geekton then says, I don't know, you guys can even probably can see this shit, so let me zoom in for you. So, Geekdom's saying here, the movie just broke records. The actors and JP side talked about it. Myself and Anime AJ triple sourced its pre production from various entities across the globe Italian Vegeta and the NATP. Oh. And people are trying to say, so basically, and then there's an article saying, uh, IGN coming out saying, sorry fans, there are no new Dragon Ball Super episodes in production for now. Saying that as when Toei released an article saying, there's no episodes in production. That's false uh, uh, information. So they're trying to cover up their tracks. Well, yeah, now. just because they're <clears throat> not making storyboards doesn't mean there's... And that's what Geekdom says. Remember when we found out about Kai, the final chapter, years before it was announced and Toei denied it despite licensing, licensing deals and made the actor speaking about it? So all in all, what we're getting at here is there's going to be a new series. It's in pre-production <laughs> already. Um, but they're just trying to hide the sources. Don't believe what they're saying that it's not coming back. It is. Um, it's coming back. Even if it if it comes out and they're not working on it right now, it's coming back with the amount of money they're making. Uh, let alone from the movie, the merchandise for this movie. There's been more Gogeta merchandise than ever before. He's everywhere, and not only in merchandise physically, but in video games. All the video games: Dokkan Battle, Legends, Fighters. Uh, Xenoverse, Dragon Ball Heroes, all of them are profiting from this movie because they're adding these new characters in, Gogeta Blue and Bro. So, you know, and other variants like Goku and Vegeta with their jackets on. So, the shit's not going anywhere. The impact of this movie made a tidal wave, <clears> and <throat> it's only going to get better from here, I think. Yeah, and I feel like, well, I feel like they're kind of taking some past storylines changing the characters changing the story a little bit and you know because what did what did uh, Gotenks have to do against Boo you know it's he had to fuse and then fight Boo right now we got Gogeta had to fuse to fight Broly you know yeah. it's like it's kind of that's kind of a you know just a one repetition there 
It's a repetition, but it's more so they're doing it because they know people love fusion. People fucking love yeah. fusion in Dragon Ball. But it, even more repetition is the fact they're doing the whole freaking Brawly again. The reboot mm-hmm. Brawly. The fact they, that they made the movie about a resurrection of Frieza, rebooting like, him again. Let's take a fusion and a juggernaut yes. and throw them at each other. Exactly. It was the ultimate cash grab movie. So, with that ultimate cash grab movie, which they certainly grabbed some cash through it, mm-hmm. they should be making some awesome new original ideas. And I think <clears throat> that's where they're going, especially with the recent chapters in the Dragon Ball Super manga. Because what Toro is doing, the guy doing the manga, he's taking it ahead of the movies now ahead of the series where the manga at least this time around with super has been behind the anime back in the old days the dragon ball manga was ahead of the anime and it was called dragon ball and the manga even through the events of what happened in z so it's been ahead of it the whole time with dragon ball super different story there was never a gt manga with dragon ball super the manga has been behind the anime so now it's ahead of it and what do they have again spoilers in general of this podcast they have uh (laughs) They have a new new story that's supposed to be taking place after the movie, right? After the events of the movie, because they mentioned it in the manga. <clears throat> I'm sure you even saw that when you read it, they mentioned it. And now they're to a point where they're introducing new lore with characters we know of, but not no one know too much about, and new villains. Villains that I mean, are ancient. Yeah, I mean... It's going to be cool, man. Do you remember... I mean, this is just kind of off the wall idea but you remember when um Jiren was talking about his past and stuff right about the villain you think this guy has could be a connection to it it could be could be I mean the dude this guy this character it wouldn't be Moro, bad timing you know he's pretty badass his name, his name is Moro he's this goat man the goat and he essentially is a planet eater Right. He does essentially like a Nega spirit bomb. He does it like essentially what you do for a Genki Dama spirit bomb is you absorb all the planet's Genki life energy and you create it in a ball. But but he gets into a, a bite sized ball, he compacts it, and then gobbles that shit down and gains the energy from it. That's crazy. He's a planet eater. So Goku does that. Right? <laughs> With energy. Uh, but he throws it at people. He's like a, right. He's like a chimp who shits in his hand and throws it. That's actually a pretty good analogy. Uh, Lend me your shit! Domino says, <laughs> what about Dragon Ball Super Duper as the title for the new series? Oh, God. Dragon Ball Super, Super D- Duper. <laughs> it's just Barney. And he tr- turns into Hank Hill, Super Saiyan. Barney. Hoo 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 hoo. So, um, yeah, man. I mean, this new... Mo- okay, this is the one thing, though. Right. Are they making... They, it's not confirmed that the new series is coming out, the anime... And if it does, are they going to follow the events of the manga? Are they going to do this? I hope they do, because these first two chapters of this mm. new story, chapter 43 and 44, are pretty dope. They I have mean, space cowboy stuff. Right. They bring in the Galactic Patrol. Goku and Vegeta become Galactic Patrol men. Talk about... Yeah. Uh, they yeah. bring up the fat uh, Supreme Kai, the old one. Right. And they're trying to wake Boo up. Boo up. Boo's still asleep from the Tournament of Power sleep. Like, okay. Uh... And they have to talk to uh, the uh, uh, Dai Kaioshin, the big, you know, chubby, jolly Supreme Kai that might have absorbed to turn into Fat Boo. Right. He's in there, and they got to talk to him because he's the one who sealed away Moro all those 10 million so years ago. So they got to get out, get it. They got to get into Majin Buu. Yeah, somehow get get some power out. But in the meantime, Galactic Patrol and Goku and Vegeta are taking it in their own hands and instant transmission across the galaxy to New Namek, where Moro's there. Um, and Vegeta's fighting him and that's where we kind of leave off and Moro takes his cloak off and he's not some hunched over old man goat he still is old man goat but he's buff old man goat um, and uh, apparently he knows how to wield magic so oh, who, who, who knows what he is well, he's either a well he is like a warlock but he's either a, a Mikayo Shin which is a essentially a demon god or a demon being uh, from the demon realm yeah um like uh, Toa and Mirar and uh, what's his face, Debora, or is some new ancient wizard entity? Maybe he is the one who made Kid Buu all those years ago. Maybe he's not. There's some connection with that. Who knows? But the story's interesting and it's original. It could link with Jiren. They could inv- have to get Jiren involved for this. Maybe Jiren and Broly get involved to help. All right. How? Do, you know. Okay, I see this. How do you feel about 
the very I, I know it's a cool technique, but in Super Saiyan God Go Goku when he does that kind of like lockdown on on uh, on Broly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. How do you compare that to say Doctor Strange? Uh, I see what you're talking about. Like in terms of it was like he was like opening like another dimension to stop. Right. Him. It's like it's like Goku can like take this kind of mystic art sort of. Sort right. Of, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. But I mean, think think of all the things that Goku's done and he's learned. You know, like I see Goku still as he's always going to be a little higher than Vegeta because of what he can do. He's shown he, Goku has shown that he can to like. Converse with people through telepathy. Right. He can instant transmission anywhere in the universe if he's met that person before. Well, yeah, just so he can sense their energy, yeah, basically. Or he's been there. Yeah, you're right. I mean... Yeah, I mean, even at the end of those... Brawl, he was like, he like, was kind of scary. He's like, it's okay, I'll just sense his energy. It's like, wherever you go, I'll find you. <laughs> people are like... Uh, they're like, uh, Tell me he's not the next, like... Instead of the Omni King, he's like the it's God. Just Goku. Goku's doing Goku's like the, kid. the. He could. That's what they could end up going to. Will they plateau Goku? Domino says, uh, "Space Cowboys and Dragon Ball. This isn't even my final form, partner. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you? Uh, why don't you skedaddle? I reckon. Uh, yeah, there's some cool stuff. Domino, you should uh, download the Shonen Jump app on your phone. It's free, and you get the free." Uh, Get the first three chapters and the last three new chapters right. of the manga. So every new month, every month, you get the new chapter for free. So if you're caught up to what is it, um, Goku or no, what is it, Jiren versus? If you're you've he's caught up. He's seen oh, everything. Okay. Yeah, and the movie. So you're caught up. It starts after the movie. So if you want to um, get the blast, and it's two chapters, I think you'll really like them, Dom. Uh, but yeah, dude. So that opens up a lot if the anime comes back and follows the manga. That opens up a whole new door, and I would love that. But what it does is it still puts them before the end of Z, where they show that time skip where Pan's right. like four years old, and they meet Oob. Because they've mentioned Oob. Oob's there. Mm -hmm. They've talked about him before the Tournament of Power. The manga actually showed Oob, where the anime didn't. So, um, even though they both talked about him. So, I would still like them, you know, as far as going forward in the series, I would like them to bring in... You know, Oob and, and, and Pan. Um, I pretty much know they're done with Gohan. So if they're done with Gohan, they need to pass his badass torch to Pan and right. actually make Pan badass. They've showed female Super Saiyans now. I mean... They can... And she's already flying around as a baby. Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on. I mean, fuck, I mean, get the fuck out of here. Right. Yeah, so... Baby just flies around and... They need to hype her up ten times more than they did in GT. It takes, like, Trunks to ever catch her for anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, dude, like, they need to make... They need to take these secondary characters and do right by them. Oob, they can make Oob really, really cool, which they were setting up to do, in, like, at the end of Z, and then, like, the first episode of GT, and then right. they dropped the ball hard. It made Majub later in the series, but again, he had one episode, and then they dropped the ball hard. So... I feel like this story could even lead into that, into Oob some more, or the fact that like you know since Kid Buu got reincarnated, all sorts of different shit. Um, but I think when they, they get into that that part, when they bring back uh, Oob, when they bring in Oob yeah. and they show Pan, I think they need to kind of st stick to their story and kind of put Goku and Vegeta finally back a little bit. I feel like Goku and Vegeta need to be there, but they just they need to kind of step down. I think. Or they still need to build. They're gonna start. I think they really have. Big. They have something really big, but once they hit that big spot, I feel like they're gonna become like the aunt and uncle or something. Like they're that. like the le They'll be like the le the legend of of the universe, you know, of right. of that Dragon Ball universe. Goku oh. will be like the 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 highest pedestal, you know. And they do. It would be funny though because the times that you would get to spend with Goku and Vegeta would probably be be really like cool. screwing with each other. Yeah, screwing each other, sparring. Coming in to help here and there, they'll kind of be like a Weiss and Beers kind of thing, right? Almost, you know. Um, but it's like, right? But it's Goku and Vegeta. Uh, 
But I, because I look, I love those two, but ultimately, it's gonna come down like voice actors. They're the both those voice actors have been the original mm-hmm. voice actors, uh, Masako Nozawa and um, fucking. Uh, I just had I had his name in my head before I said Masako. Um, uh, fucking and Vegeta's voice actor. Um, they're they're getting old, man, and especially Masako like. They're not gonna be doing this forever. I mean, they're gonna try, bless their hearts, but. Um, right. Uh, I mean, but they can they can slow down. Oh, Horikawa, Horikawa. They could slow video. down the use for them. Exactly. They slow down the use for them, put them in the background, like we right. were saying, character wise, and put the other characters for in the I mean, forefront. Okay, imagine this now. Finally, okay. Goten, cool maybe. What if? Um, okay, so so. Goku and Vegeta are prime example of destruction and creation. Kind of like they are. You have like angry and like overly joyful. <laughs> like, right, right. And then, and then you smush them together and you make this ultimate being that can protect an entire universe. Yeah, that's gonna. Much. That's gonna basically put. Make it to where. Basically, Vegeta could be the destruction god, and Goku could be the angel, almost. To a degree. I mean, that's where, I mean, Whis keeps even asking both of them uh, if they if they want to be destruction gods now. Um, oh, my gosh. He keeps then, mentioning both of them, you know? Right. And then you and then you have Frieza at the end of it. Oh, yeah. Frieza doing his thing, right. Saying something about... What's interesting is Frieza. He really paid a lot of a lot of attention to the fused Goku and Vegeta. Mm-hmm. What does that What does that <clears> mean? <throat> we might see Frieza fused with somebody in the future. Finally, we never seen Frieza fused with anybody. We never seen fuses, anybody fused besides. What if he fuses with Beerus. That'd be fucking crazy. I bet there is a beer a Beerus fusion from the Dragon Ball fusion. We've already game. seen. Let me see. Golden Frieza. We've already seen Golden Frieza, like, already be able to control construction, or destruction key, right? What's that now? We've seen Golden Frieza basically control oh, destruction, yeah, key. destruction key. Oh, yeah, control destruction key, yeah. And, I mean, they're, he, that's kind of like a setup. <clears throat> Do you notice that anytime we says kind of spoken or talk to um, Frieza, it's kind of been kind of awkward. We talk to Frieza. Yeah, it is kind of awkward, but it's more it's it's Frieza being awkward. Um, the Weiss. Weiss is just like whatever. <laughs> like they don't like each other. <laughs> well, Weiss gave Frieza's life back, but it was more so right. as Beerus said it. Uh, I'm trying to find the Beerus. And Frieza fusion and Dragon Ball fusions, but it's not in here anywhere. I think I think uh, Beerus is tired of being destruction god. It's boring to him. That's the thing. It is. It's boring to him. So. And I think that. Um, I think Brawly would make I think, a good god of destruction. I think Frieza would Brawly love to be a god of destruction. I think they know Frieza would be a good one. The thing is, he he would definitely need an angel to keep him in check. And you know something else, they. They kind of gave him multiple tries to to prove that he could be trustworthy and like listen to what he's told. Right. He's he's is he actually went from when they first took him out of hell. They he basically had to promise that he had to do you know this that and the other, and then he goes out and he immediately starts killing people. <laughs> Yeah, he already starts taking plants. But that's right. the thing. He They need that balance, though, too. That's kind of probably how they kind of calculated it in. But now he's, like, arrogantly, like, just because he doesn't want to die, you know, like, over some stupid, what, Goku got this whole thing together. Right. You know, like, he doesn't want to die from that. So he's, like... There's definitely a lot of story you know, with Frieza. He, he starts playing ball in, in the Tournament of Power, you know, and then mm-hmm. once they play ball together, they like, boom, they take Jiren out like it was nothing, dude. Just like, not for nothing, but I right, mean, like, right. he was still juggernaut in the 
shit. But he, but they like teamed up and did a great job, got them eliminated, knowing they had work. They worked together, even though they had lost together. Right. You know, and so it's interesting how what they're gonna take. It's kind of like the Batman Joker thing with both of the Golden right. Vegeta you have to have right now. yeah. Dom says, personally, I'd like to see situations so dangerous where Whis has to fight seriously. I would love to see Whis fight seriously. And it isn't Whis and Beerus fusion, just Weirs. Oh, we were saying uh, Beerus and Frieza fusion. Sorry. Um, but yes, I would love to see Whis fight seriously. Because Whis? right now, Whis can just fucking flick and karate chop people one hit and knock them out. Yeah, what if Whis... Um fused with Goku when he was like Master Ultra Instinct. That'd be crazy. Well, we certainly Matt has Master Ultra Instinct, right? But base yeah, form, base form like just right. Like, Weiss is just always <laughs> yeah. Granted, I don't know if that's his hair color. That's why his hair's white or not. But who knows? Maybe it's just like an angel form. It's like basically it's like it's like true angel Goku is what Ultra right. Instinct is. That's yeah. Right. Um, one of those first shots we got of him look like angel wings or something like that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I don't think so. I know it was Merge Zamasu had like big angel wings behind him when he had his big crazy. Oh, is that what it was? Like energy cross and ring behind him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a really cool design. How crazy he looks, fused. But um, yeah, man. I mean, as far as the future of the series, I mean, they have a lot to do. I want them to have Goku and Vegeta go out on a big, like a big bang, no pun intended, with. Like what the, this new arc in the manga is doing. Definitely before they get to the part where it's in the Z, where they pass yeah. that torch over. I still want Goku and Vegeta to like reach even greater heights. I want some crazy angelic battle or the fact that get the angels involved because the Omni King's threatened. I would love them to possibly show Zarama, who's the guy who is supposedly created the Super Dragon Balls. Because if he created Super Dragon Balls and they can restore destroyed, uni- erased universes that were erased by the Omni King. That means those Dragon Balls are stronger than the Omni King's power, which means he's stronger than the Omni King. So, let's see this motherfucker, right? Where is he coming into play? Like, Okay, when, when um, in the movie, when they fused, mm-hmm. they fused ba- base form, right? Yes. Okay, and then in their base form, they transformed. The Super Saiyan, right? Okay, here's a gift, Dokkan. <laughs> like, right there. Uh, but... Well, they already got the transforming card in Dokkan. I know, but it's like that's the gift, you know. Oh, they. I mean, it, it, it went hand in hand with each other almost. Um, but so they fused, then they hit that form like just we in general just going doing that hmm thing. That's one of the things that caught me my attention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then besides that was I think there was a shadowy figure of Gogeta. Like within like some sort of aura or something, like it was like kind of like a blurry sil- silhouette. It looked ex- to me. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I kind of made it up in my head, but to me it looked like the silhouette that we saw when Beerus pictured the Super Saiyan God. Oh, right. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. I, mean, I saw that image and I was like, whoa, wait a second, that looked familiar. Yeah. That'd be crazy. I wish that's another thing. I kind of wish Beerus was a little more involved in this movie. They kind of just put him as a gag character. Um, that would have been cool if he would have saw. But I think he they kind of made the implication in the movie that he knew what was going on the whole time because he goes, "Oh, they finally won." Like he could just hear it or something. Like he didn't have to be there. He could just fucking sit back and listen to the whole battle or something. But they said at the end of it that Goku mentions that I think you're stronger than Beerus or could be stronger than Beerus. That's where people were like. Broly's stronger than Jiren. That's the thing. Well, I'll sell this right now. Jiren stomps Broly. Now, if Broly gets trained by Goku and starts learning the technique and how to control his anger some, he would put up a good challenge against Jiren. But Jiren would not have any of Broly's outrage. He would fucking put him to sleep quick. He would. Broly might get up a few times, but at, at the end of the day, Jiren would fucking... Because that's another thing. you got to remember, in the Tournament of Power... Jiren was getting his ass was trying to get his, people were trying to whoop Jiren's ass the whole fucking tournament and Jiren basically held his own until the very very end and then just went brute at the end because he had like a whole team ganging up on him if he it was just him and one person Brawly Jiren would stop Brawly what, would you, what do you think I mean we already saw Jiren dealing with 
that that rage form, that oh, yeah. legendary Super Saiyan form. We saw how he deal dealt with it. Yes. I mean, like with ease, like just a little bit of, <laughs> like yeah, he, that's all he was yeah, doing. Yeah, he wasn't much. even trying really. Granted, her form's not as strong as Broly's, but still. Right. But we've already seen him how he handles that rage. So stylistically, not good for Broly. No, you're right. I mean, but again, Brawly Rampage mode, Jiren doesn't have anything. He's too level-headed. He will not have any of that. He'll just, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just, Jiren's too OP. You gotta understand, Ultra Instinct Goku is stronger than Fusion. It's absurd to think about, because Fusion's stupid strong, but Ultra Instinct is stronger than Fusion. That's how strong Ultra Instinct is. It's like fucking literally the next shelf. Um, uh, because normally other forms wouldn't necessarily be stronger in fusion like that, but especially a fusion okay. of blue. Also, we saw the we saw that I feel like I saw that Ultra Instinct in between, in between um, transformations. I don't remember we went to that earlier. Did yeah, we, definitely. Okay. Yeah, I definitely flashed in there. Whether it was that or they made another artistic choice, like you could say for the, all the green hair flashes and shit. Whether or not it was there, our head canon is that he flashed into Ultra Instinct for a second and couldn't hold on to it or something. Because um, look, if like, he would have came Ultra Instinct, Brawley would have been done for. Yeah, I feel like those those flashes are kind of, you know, signals to like as shown as as a as like here's a sign to come of what's going to happen next in this progression of transformation. Right. Domino asks if we remember in the uh, Universal Survival arc, uh, Dr. Rota from Universe 6, uh, he says he still loses sleep at night wondering what his power was. <laughs> yeah, because the old joke was, my power? And then he like, gets hit by somebody. Uh, I think it would be cool for a Universal Threat where Goku, Vegeta, and Brawly, Jiren, and lots of other really strong guys have to come together. That's what I'm hoping this arc comes to. Like, I'm hoping this goat guy, Moro, this wizard, ancient wizard, isn't just all himself. Like, Granted, he's eating planet power, to be strong, and he already is fighting God level Vegeta, red haired right. Vegeta in the manga. Um, so you know he can keep up with that. If this guy gets his power back, he can be absurdly strong, and then he can have friends, or there's somebody above him, right? That's usually, uh, you know, typical uh, stereotype of Dragon Ball is, you know, um, you see, you get introduced to a villain, but there was actually a villain even more villainous. Right. Oh yeah. Some shit. So, or they're connected to something even worse. So, yeah, I think it could come to that point. Definitely, the fact that they mentioned that Goku was fighting Broly again. You know what? I was just thinking about also like, Piccolo was literally there to basically teach him how to fuse real quick. Right. <laughs> like that was his purpose of in the movie. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. but come on, man! I want to see some badass Piccolo, dude. Yeah, Piccolo's no more really. He's kind of out the game. Like, give us some, give us a little bit more Piccolo. Like, I wish what they could have did, and this this is not just fan service. They could actually wrote some good shit, but this was the point where the show was still in production, like a uh, clusterfuck. Was when they had the Universe Six Seven tournament, and Piccolo was on the team. They could have had Weiss at least for just even if the the a few days or however long it was before the tournament started. They could have had Whis, because this was, like, unlike the Tournament of Power, that Universe 6 7 tournament, they had some time to train before it. Right. The Tournament of Power was like, you have, you have, like, you have, like, a day and a half to find your team and then meet us in the World of Void. So it was like, you know. So they could have had everybody, Whis could have trained everybody on that team. He could have trained Piccolo and Majin Buu, at least just a little bit, just so they can get some, like, intense angel training on Beerus' planet. Like, yeah, granted, they're not as strong as Goku and Vegeta. Oh, what? But still, like, what if Piccolo started learning from Whis and perhaps learn how to can control any form of god key? Maybe not make it that crazy, right. but even if they would have... They, they lost, in my book, they lost... Uh, um, I feel like... Points based on the fact that they didn't really train Piccolo. And I mean, if they, give, if they give something, they're definitely... Okay, Piccolo is still there. They're yes. saying, hey, look, here's Piccolo. He's right. still here. He's still here, yeah. You know, so he's still there. Also, he's riding on the piggybacks 
and and you know how Weiss is. Weiss already knows this crap, right? You know he'll be like asking Piccolo, like, so how do you know this? When Al says they're getting involved with new Namek, Piccolo might become more of the story. You know, since they're involving the Namek Namekians again. Right. Shit, he might be come back into the fray. I mean, they had him in the movie, which is shit. They had Piccolo over Gohan. They had fucking the peel. They even even Emperor Pilaf was in the movie, and Gohan wasn't in it. Even though Emperor Pilaf didn't yeah. say anything, he was in it for one scene. The scene where Goten and Trunks were on the cell phone. I think phone. that's why they turned to this future Gohan sort of idea, you know? The, the, the changing over to the future Gohan, like, should we retell the future arc? What are you talking about? Like, with video games? What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, well, it is, like, people like future Gohan. They're not really trying to spark anything, I don't think. You don't think so? Nah, they don't. I they're mean, trying is, to, is Super going to keep... take us into the future again? Or uh, they... If they do, Gohan won't be there. If they do, they need to solve what's fucking going on. With okay, what if two they, trunkses and two mys? Well, well, if they have a past, what if the past was actually repaired or repaired itself somehow or some like and and the timelines match back up again and it's all fine and dandy and then you have that future Gohan and he's just hurt his arm this time instead of lost his arm. They could, man. They could make it interesting. I mean. Who knows if they really want to bring Gohan back somehow? Because right now he's kind of out of frame. That's where I think Pan should just step in and take on his legacy. Just give the torch to her and make her badass in your place, Gohan. You had your moments. I think I mean, uh, just like Go- Domino says, he says yes, more Piccolo and more Seventeen. I think so too. Seventeen's badass, and he was a badass tournament yeah. power. He's MVP for that matter, so he I, should be. Uh, he deserves a spot for sure. Yeah, they need to be. And you know what? I want to see his kids. We never got to see his kids yet. And now he likes humans. Well, he, he's part human. He better like them. I mean, but I mean, he more. actually cares for him. Yeah, right. Because right. um, he was talking to seven to eighteen about his feelings for humans before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, he uh, he's got a lot of char- character development, and there's a lot more for him in the future, and. They should definitely bring him back. And again, if not him, his kids. But the thing is, he's never really going to age, so they can bring him in as long as they want. Just do not retell anything with Super 17, please. No more su- no Super 17. Don't retell Dragon Ball GT things. That's one thing I'm worried about if they bring up this Zarama guy I'm telling you about, the guy who made the Super Dragon Balls. Is it going to be like Dragon Ball Super's version of Omega Shinron? Because he was a dragon based on the Dragon Balls. Yeah, a dragon, a dude sealed in the, in the Dark Star Dragon Balls. Granted, those are Earth Dragon Balls that were na- like basically naked Dragon Balls. Okay, so somebody would have to create Zarama then. Well, in that case, yes. But I'm saying if Zer- they just show Zarama and he's not exactly like Shenron, but it would be like the super version of Shenron because he's some dragon god based off of the Dragon Balls, or has something to do with the Dragon Balls. In this case, in Super Drama, it is in fact the Dragon God who made the Dragon Balls, where Sh- Omega Shinron was a dragon being trapped, or the spirit of those Dragon Balls. So it's different. But you get what I'm saying. <clears throat> Zarama would be like the ultimate god, a dragon god, to the point where some people have a, have a theory that he would resemble a Namekian, kind of. Well, yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was thinking, because... I mean, who makes the Dragon Balls? The Mechians. The Mechians. You know, they say the Mechians, it was a theory, is they're one, they found a super Dragon Ball, and they they harvested off of it, basically. They chipped they chipped off of the super Dragon Ball and got enough crystal to make their Dragon Balls. Mm. But the fact that they were even drawn to it, or that they could even chip the Dragon Ball, you'd figure that you wouldn't even be able to chip it no matter what, since it's so big, and it's ma- basically a magic. So they must have... The magic the ship it and collect they got the magic to collect it uh that one also says why no super 17 the most op dokkan card needs some loving <laughs> <laughs> he, he agrees no super 17 yes they just uh granted it could have been cool when it was in gt they just don't need to do it now if they have 17 in um, no i think he's cooler like he is right if anything, they need to do at some time down the road, like a 17-18 fusion or something. But if even that, like maybe not. 
Um, He's like the dude from uh, Star Trek. What was the robot, the android's name? I don't know, actually. From Star Trek? I don't remember. Data. 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 He's like, Damn. All right. I don't know. It's a little nerdy. I can't know. Oh, it's not nerdy. We're talking about nerdy. This is pan nerdy, dog. I'm, I'm, just, no, I'm just being a dork. I re- I'm doing that because I don't fucking know. Oh, well, Data was an android on um, on Star Trek. Mm, okay. And he, like, knew everything, and he was very proper and, like, very well-spoken and, and like, was trying to learn how to be human. Mm-hmm. It's funny that <laughs> Seventeen's the same way. Mm-hmm. He's, like, learning how to be human. Yeah. And in his being... case, though, it's learning how to be human again. Right. Yeah. Right. Because but not, he, he doesn't know how to be human. He still has that android mind. Right, right. Yeah, I don't think he remembers his human life. I don't think either of them remember their human lives. Because, you know, those two are actually real humans right. before, yeah. But, yeah, like you said, I think they've that life's been completely erased from them. It's like that the soul of that body's not there anymore. It's just, you know, a program inside a new body which is crazy to think about um yeah 17 would be dope him coming back into the fray i would love for them to just show more about the other universes of course universe 11 i would like to see more universe 6 um but i mean they, the yeah, possibilities yeah. are endless really now since they brought fucking brawly and, and they left him alive and you just brought i mean i hope they don't I, the way i just thought about this i hope they don't take it like down a row of different movies you know, because I, I don't mind. I would, honestly wouldn't mind like a season movie, season movie. That'd be great. Honestly, yeah. that'd be that would bring a lot of rotation to the series. A lot of people are, are actually hoping that it goes into a seasonal venture, kind of like how My Hero Academia does. It's mm-hmm. a shown in the seasonal. Uh, One Punch Man, which is like a you know very seasonal, like a couple years. Um, you know, uh, Attack on Titan seasonal. Uh, they do that so they can work on uh, making a better story and better animation. I think our, a season like that, which I, I would appreciate that. Right, and I think that our um, on the manga, I think that our new character that we're dealing with is a very much a step in, stepping stone to maybe the end of this season having a movie with like Jiren or something. Mm-hmm. You know. A movie out with Jiren, yeah. I mean, maybe he, maybe he figures it out that it is the person that Jiren was speaking, talking about, or somebody figures that out, and then they all get together, and Jiren and Goku have to fight together to. Yeah, man. I mean, that'd be dude. That'd be cool. I mean, I there people think there is gonna be another movie because there's there was two back when we first got rumors about this movie, there were two domains bought. Mm-hmm. And both of them had basically the, the word move, Dragon Ball movie and the year in its domain. So there's probably there probably is ideas for another movie for sure. It's just a matter of are they going to do it before the series comes back? So two movies, then the series, or is it going to be the series, season break, movie, then season again? Because that would be cool. And yes, Domino, we had Raising Cane's for dinner. And... Uh, I think Robert got A and I got N, and I also got a free <laughs> Texas toast. And Robert went online and entered his code, spun a roulette wheel, and also got a free Texas toast. No joke. Bloke. I try to avoid bread though, so I don't. I didn't eat my Texas toast. I was like, "Woo, what's the next sticker gonna be? A free ketchup packet?" whole damn cup of your secret sauce (laughs) feel it win it love it share it so uh yeah i mean needless to say guys this this movie had a had an enormous impact on the series at large and the world i mean what's great about it you know being worldwide i mean look the video games you got dragon ball fighters blowing up not only Mm -hmm. is it a core fighting dragon ball game the first of its kind it won Best Fighting Game of the Year at the Video Game Awards. It got into Evo its first year out, which means Evo is a prestigious uh, fighting game competition held every year in Vegas. Mm-hmm. For fighting games that have been around for fucking 10 plus years, 20 years, some of them, Street Fighters and shit, right? Even like Super Smash Brothers is in this shit. 
And then Dragon Ball Fighters gets into Evo its first year out. Gets into Evo. And then from there it just blew up, man. I mean, they just had last night, you know, from us filming this, they had the uh, Dragon Ball Fighters World Tour Championship where all the major mm-hmm. conferences, all the winners of that went to the championship brackets. And, uh, you know, we watched some of this here in Pay Nerdy yesterday. And it was awesome, man. This Japanese kid won it all. Um, he's a champion, Dragon Ball Z Fighters champion of the world. Oh, and man. that's how big that game is right now, where it's stat competitive, where people from other fighting games are going to it. But they also love Dragon Ball, and it's getting that much recognition, recognition you know. It also at the video game, yeah, I'm excited. Video Game Awards at one best fighting game of the year. That's big for a Dragon Ball to, to win a big award like that. You had Goku in the Macy Day's Day Parade, right? You got Dokkan Battle uh, countlessly getting top uh, grossing in iTunes and uh, Google stores, right? You, they got a new Dragon Ball Z RPG, action RPG coming out, right? I mean, it's boom, 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 one thing after another. The merch, the video games, the show, the manga, it will not stop. Will it not stop to the point where they finally will make a badass, sweet, awesome live action uh, franchise? I hope so one day, and I hope so. Hope that I'm involved in that. But um, man, I mean, it's just uh, at this point, the, it, it's not ending anytime soon. I mean, it's not. It's it can't. No, it's, um, it won't. It has so everything is just start as has been kind of put together so that it can just shove the whole series into another chapter. Right. You know. And maybe break off into several different shows. You can have a whole fucking show just based on Universe 11 stuff. You can have a, a whole series on Jiren's life if you really wanted to. See how he got to the, his path to power, you know. You could... Yeah, you still, you still see Kid Jiren, right. Teen Jiren. Right, and all his epic battles that he had to fight, dude. You know, there's so and there's much there's also left. a possibility. Well, what about Beerus? Oh, yeah, and Beerus is up, too, yeah. Can his you imagine past. seeing Beerus' life? Beerus and Champa, you know, where they came from, how they became Gods of Destruction. Um, I would love shorts, even just mangas of that at first, um, and then officially getting some animated versions of them, you know? I would love that kind of shit, man. Um, yeah. Ooh. I mean, the future's so bright. I mean, they have conventions now, too. They have Kamea Khan, by the way, which I will be in. You guys all know that. Um, Kamea Khan's in the UK now. They have other thing, big conventions that are all Dragon Ball only. Saiyan Khan. Saiyan Khan is a big one now. Um, it's everywhere. What were you going to say? Um, I was just. I was thinking about some weird stuff. Oh. <laughs> like Omni King. And not necessarily imagining all the times that I could that I saw the Omni King with all the angels. Mm-hmm. How many times have you seen that? Uh, he they did it before they had the uh, prelim match, and then they had them during the tournament of power. Um, basically, when he just gathers them all up, you know, he only has them all together when he gets the uh, when they have the big tournament. Oh no. Mm, what? Mm, what? Mm, I just made a connection. What? Um, you know how you have the Omni King now? Mm-hmm. So you have two Zenos? Yeah. Okay, this Zeno came from this timeline. Right. Bloop, into, you know, they're not the same timeline. When, when 17 wished for all the universes that were destroyed come back again mm-hmm. um, Zamasu's universe was also destroyed yes universe 10 was destroyed okay so but now you, brought, have, you have the possibility back. of Zamasu going back Te- if you really kind of look second. deep into if you it kind, yeah but I, I, I want to say yeah but I want to say no because they uh that was just because the timelines differentiate from the universes. Kind of like, since there's two Omni Kings, that means there's different sets of angels, too. I'm, and the Omni King, that the, the second Omni King they picked up, he destroyed that entire multiverse. Every Not just Universe 7 in, 
that that alternate timeline, he destroyed every single universe in that alternate timeline. Where he was just floating and literally by himself and literally nothingness. Twelve. And then Goku's years. like, hey. Yeah, he came back, hey. <laughs> pulled him up. He was like, Wah. Um. So that's where I'm like, Goku. It, if it did, maybe it does transcend uh, timelines and it did just restore that whole timelines 12 universes back. But I don't. Oh, I doubt. I doubt it exceeds timelines. Is what I'm saying. Because you had. I'm just saying. If it did, then I'm, will I'm be just back. saying you have this Zeno with this knowledge of these planets. You have this Zeno with this knowledge of these planets. Right, 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 right. Who knows, man? The thing is, he erased all those planets. <laughs> and maybe when he erases, he can't even bring it back. Maybe that's the, his the craziest power is. I don't think he can snap them back into existence. I think if they're dead, they're dead. I think it's a there might be some sort of complication with it that brings back those universes. You know what I'm saying? There could be, man. Who knows? I mean, if Zamasu's back, it'd be crazy. But I really don't want him back, to be honest. Um, though I would like Trunks to have a better conclusion, so that could be lead to one. But I think they need to move past the reusing characters unless it comes into super importance. Yeah, I think Trunks has always been one of those in their back pocket sort of characters. It's another cash grab character. Right, he's, he... People love him. Yeah. I mean, he's like a little, little bad boy. You got the sword and... But cool he's Leather jacket, you know, and the sword, and yeah, he's cool, yeah. He's basically like, yeah, like an 80s movie character. With the sword. Action character with a sword, yeah. Um, Donna says, I hope it's be- action is better than Origins. You mean Evolution? Dragon Ball Evolutions? Yeah, that, fuck that movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if they make a live action one, it will definitely be better than that shit. Um, like I said, I just hope I'm involved. But um, that could be a whole nother podcast one day talking about the possibility of live action shit. Uh, I think we might even talk about that before. But all in all, yeah. it's uh, it's inevitable for that. It's inevitable for more in the series. It's inevitable for more cool Dragon Ball shit. I just hope right. they take it more serious this time in terms of the production of the story, which I think that they are going to, based on what they've heard from fans and what they did with this movie. I think they know to take it slow and do it the right way this time and not flub it like the first, you know, practically, you know, 45 episodes of Super were flubbed. Um, I think, do you think we'll get a retelling of the movie? I hope not. If they do, I will be extremely pissed. Well, they called it Super. They called it Super, right? So that's good. So it means they don't need to retell it. And since the manga's ahead of it now, I would hope they just move past the movie and let the movie be the movie's story, you know? I, I can see different arcs coming out of it, for sure. And just, like, at the end of those arcs, you have a big movie that creates the next character or the next character, you know? Yeah, I would like something like that. I just don't want them to repeat what they just did again, because then it's kind of like beating a, totally beating a dead horse at that point, dude. It's like, right. like, oh man, I, I, I. Um, so I, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. I don't think they're gonna do that. I think that they will move on finally. Uh, the question is, are they gonna do what the manga has in store? What the manga's doing now? I think that I mean, would be cool animated. I, I did also. I mean, I hope nobody. I hope they don't get spooked about like the character development of say Jiren or something like that too um cause his he's pretty much has no character right he's very bland let's be honest I mean they they fiddled with it in terms of the power but are people taken to it no nobody really likes his, his backstory they think it's most people think Jiren's very one dimensional they like how strong and badass he is but in terms of his character most people say it's as good as a dead fish. Um, Plus, it got it kind of got boring to me seeing Jiren be such a tank. Such like, a tank. Yeah, right, like right. nobody could touch him. Um, I did like the one character development aspect of when he kind of snapped and shot at the crowd when Goku got real mad and then punched him in the face real badass. That whole scene uh, with Jiren snapping and being like "fuck friendship" basically and shooting the, his all the uh, Universe Seven to try to destroy him. I thought that was cool because that wasn't showing Jiren as evil. That was showing Jiren as losing his cool finally. And I appreciated that. Yeah. But even his backstory, it's not that exciting. It's pretty generic. He's kind of bland. But they could still do a lot with him with how 
far of a power pedestal they put him on. They could totally do something badass with him and his character, especially developing his character. And I'm thinking with him losing in the tournament of power and getting cut down a notch, um, maybe that will kind of boost some character development in him, you know? Actually losing the yeah. Goku. Um, but who knows, man? I mean, See, like the Jiren, like if we had a Jiren arc, which like... It would be a continuance of what we learned in Super. I mean, you we already have like his his mentor sort of kind of like flashes of him, you know. Yeah, mentions. That's the thing. It's so generic. It's just kind of like it's like almost like a story he thought Toriyama thought of in like. A I know. Life. It's just it's just making me feel like Jiren's gonna disappear. Well, look at what they did with fucking Hit, man. I mean, Hit. He had so he has so much potential. He's a thousand years old. He's the ultimate assassin. He's super badass. He can make pocket dimensions and stop time and mm-hmm. time skip and blah, blah, blah. But he also he gets offed by Jiren, and now he's pretty much just like another just kind of secondary character again. Jiren's like a, a Zeno character. Zeno... Like, like, multi... Like, as far as... Like, Mass Saiyan... Oh, like, like, yeah, 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 I understand. Kind of, yeah, yeah, he reminds you of like a, well, that would be like a Mikhail Shin. Um, yeah, yeah, like a, yeah, like a person like Mira or Toa. Like, I feel like Hit would be in that sort of realm of his, like, ultimate power. Yeah, right. He does have really crazy red aura like that. Um, yeah, who knows, man. Uh, maybe that's how he ended up getting his power is he talked to him like Mikhail Shin. That would make something interesting with the story. Maybe that's his people. Um, maybe he's like the son of some of the Kyle Shin. Uh, yeah, man, I don't know. But I think, uh, shit, man, you want to call it a, call it a cast? I got Oolong. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, guys, I mean, right thanks away. for stopping by. Uh, thanks for stopping by here at the, oh yeah, we didn't even mention the whole time, the World Tournament Tenkaichi Budokai stage. Yeah, nobody's actually here right now. We got the whole stage to ourselves uh, for uh, about an hour and a half, so. Um, yeah. But yeah, dudes, uh, peeps, all y'all who's watching, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking us out and uh, chilling with us here on Pan Nerdia's podcast. Uh, numero cuatro, number four Ooh. there, right? Um, yeah, our blast, fourth one that is, and uh, it's we a just quadcast, quadcast. Mm. We wanted to discuss, well, of course, Dragon Ball Super Broly because, uh, you know, it was amazing and yeah. its impact it left on everything is just it goes to show what's in store with with uh, the future of of the Dragon Ball franchise. A little, a little fact and a little. Little, uh, a little, uh, a little, uh, a little fun. Yeah. A little fact, a little, a little fun. A little fact, a little fun. And Domino says uh, he liked this. It was a good discussion. He can, it can really be enjoyable to him. Yeah. Well, that's what we want it to be, man. Yeah. And uh, this will also be archived onto YouTube. It'll be our Panerity podcast. We're gonna try to do every Monday night um, live, and then up on uh, YouTube every Wednesday. Wednesdays. So Wednesday upload. Now, uh, each week will be something different. Tonight, we wanted to discuss Dragon Ball Super Brawl and its impact. Next week, who knows? It can go anywhere with Pan Nerdia Podcast number five. Also, be looking out tomorrow on the Pan Nerdia YouTube channel for the first installment of A Fighter's Journey, the uh, series where I essentially relearn Dragon Ball Fighters, try to brush up on my skills, and actually get good at the game because, uh, disclosure, I've... I suck. I've seen the artwork for even the thumbnail, and it's awesome. It's dope. If you guys would like the thumbnail, it would be really sweet. I think Domino might have saw it, too. Yeah. Um, sweet. It's going to be dope. Uh, real quick, tentative schedule for generic Monday through Friday on YouTube. Uh, Mondays will most likely be time lapses. Tuesdays will be uh, a fighter's journey. Wednesdays will be podcast release. Uh, Thursdays will be fighter's journey. And Fridays will most likely be Red Dead or whatever. It's casual Friday, right? It'll be just a video of me putting on different pairs of jeans. <laughs> uh, that's so, whatever Friday. That's whatever Friday. Just do whatever. I get on here and say, hey, we're doing whatever. Uh, 
Uh, we're just going to peel a bunch of... <laughs> I'm going to go buy 20 Raising Cane sodas. We're going to peel all the codes and try to win that 100 grand. Friday, Friday, Friday. Um, I'm going to dig it in the trash for the months in November. We're just going to film Robert digging in the trash. Friday on Pandordia. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm going to keep blasting on these paintings, getting ready for Kamehameha Khan. Woo! And... Uh, Get ready for the future of this channel. Hey, guess what? Next month, next month, baby, the end of the month, that is, like the last week of February, is, well, maybe it's like the middle of February, is the anniversary of Pan-Nerdia. So, Ooh. I know I said the new year is going to bring a lot of new shit. One and year. And I didn't get to really do a lot of the new year because of all the crazy move shit. So, the new year will respectively start when the anniversary of Pan-Nerdia rolls around. The one year anniversary, baby. And, um, yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. We'll be back for number five next week. And in the meantime, stay fly, and we'll see you then. Robert? Peace out. Hey, Ron. <laughs> Pilgrim. Initiate Pilgrim.exe. <laughs>